Yersinia pestis by Carson Breezy. While Yersinia pestis may seem straightforward in its ability to affect us, due of course to what we know about the Black Death, it's not as simple as one may think. Yersinia pestis in specific areas of the body can lead to multiple different infections with multiple different names. The bubonic plague, which I believe is the most common example of Yersinia pestis, is an infection of the lymph nodes. Septismic plague is a bloodstream infection, and pneumonic plague is a lung infection. Each of these follow each other as Yersinia pestis spreads, but each one is also more rare than the last. So for the sake of simplicity, I'll be talking about the bubonic plague, but most of the information being discussed is applicable to all three. On a microscopic level, Yersinia pestis is a gram-negative, non-modal, rod-shaped facultative anaerobe. It is believed that Yersinia pestis mutated from Yersinia pseudotuberculosis and gained the ability, of course, to be transmitted by flea bite. This bacteria can be transmitted between animals the same way it can be transmitted to humans via things like flea and bug bites. Human to human exchange is best defined the same way the flu virus is exchanged through coughing and the subsequent fluid exchange. One of the most major and well-known historical outbreaks of Yersinia pestis and the bubonic plague is known as the Black Death. Between the years of 1347 and 1352, the bubonic plague killed roughly 25 to 30 million Europeans. Two-thirds of those who had the disease died, and in areas where the disease was rampant, roughly 30 to 50 percent of the people there would succumb to the virus. The point of origin of the disease is unclear, but historians commonly assume that it entered Europe either through the trading ports in Sicily, Italy, or came from Mongol traders traveling the Silk Road. But ultimately, it was the fleas, rats, and scared humans that caused the disease to spread across Europe. The reason why I chose the bubonic plague and Yersinia pestis is because I love history and the plague created one of the most fascinating eras in European history. However, when I first started working on this project, I knew I had to include a video that was shown to me in the seventh grade for my history class at the time. This song has to do with the plague, and it is both funny and helpful for learning. If you'd like, you can watch the entire thing on your own. But for the sake of being fast, I'm only gonna show you a short clip that exemplifies its hilarity and helpfulness when it comes to learning about the disease. Uh-huh, it's the plague, gonna kill you in a few days. A pandemic so severe, black death caused such horror and fear. And there ain't no cure for that girl, you'll be dead in no time flat girl. You get a necrosis from the Yersinia pestis And it makes your tongue a black girl Gonna bury you out and back, girl Symptoms of bubonic plague After roughly three to seven days of incubation in the host Symptoms of bubonic plague in particular begin to show. These symptoms include fever, chills, headaches, body aches, weakness, nausea, and vomiting. Yersinia pestis also causes black sores filled with pus to pop up around the body. Armpits, chest, neck, and legs are all good examples of areas where these sores would pop up. These black sores were significant to the plague, however, as they are known as buboes. And these buboes are a defining characteristic that distinguishes the plague and gives it its iconic name, bubonic plague. In the past, when we had little clue about the microscopic world, treatment for diseases like these were incredibly rudimentary. But what I find so interesting is that Although they had no idea of the origin of the virus, or that it was microscopic at all, 
people still tried to find ways to prevent its spread. When trying to treat the plague in medieval times, plague doctors used a variety of methods, like air cleansers, as many believed the disease was caused by bad air. Others believed that only faith could save them, and that prayers would absolve them of the sin that brought upon the plague. Bloodletting, another common strategy to fight the plague, involved the release or removal of bad blood, either through letting it flow from open wounds or using leeches to suck it out. Some even concocted potions to try and combat the plague, but many did the worst thing they could do, run, taking the plague with them. There were some people who quarantined, but those people were mainly in areas where the plague was so rampant and inescapable that they couldn't get away or they were just simply too weak to run. Today, after decades of medical advancements, we now know the best way to combat the plague. Antibiotics. For adults, antibiotics like streptomycin, gentamicin, levoflaxacin, and ciprofloxacin are some of the best examples of treatments we can use to combat the plague in someone's body. When it comes to the best chance of survival, antibiotic use should begin within seven days of getting the infection and last for at least seven days. Meaning, you should be taking antibiotics once a day for seven days, but oftentimes that number can even expand to at least two weeks, depending on how serious the infection really is. And I know I show a vaccine for Yersinia pestis on there, but really antibiotics are what we should be using. I just thought it was a nice little example of what I was going for. While the most well-known outbreak of Yersinia pestis is the Black Death, the plague isn't gone. Remnants of it still persist throughout the world. In recent years, spanning all the way up to as recently as 2019, Colorado has seen a cluster of bubonic plague cases. Spreading amongst prairie dogs in wildlife refuges, and then to people, this outbreak has left 46 animals hospitalized and led to the potential exposure of up to 116 people. Worldwide, however, roughly 3,000 cases are reported each year, with the majority of cases being reported from areas like Africa, Asia, and South America. Madagascar, between the years of 1995 and 2012, has also seen its fair share of exposure to the virus. Mutations in black rats has caused the plague to move throughout Madagascar over the years, and the country has seen small outbreaks throughout the 20-year timeline. In conclusion, it is safe to say that the threat of Yersinia pestis has decreased over the years as our medical knowledge has advanced. However, although the threat is gone, I believe that the era of the Black Death is one of the most interesting and culturally intriguing areas of history and was one of the main reasons why I picked this topic, so that I can learn a bit more about that time and the disease that ravaged Europe. Here are a preview of my quiz questions, and I will end you with a quick glance at my work site. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.